Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like to see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2019, episode number 14. We are 6 and 1 in the conference part of our season right now after our first loss just incurred. We're into the second half here on the road at University of Illinois, Chicago. Uh, uh, in this one, we, we started off one for nine from the field, uh, had a big deficit, then got hot from the field, suddenly had a big lead, and then went right back to not being able to make a shot. So, uh, two stretches in this game. We have been absolutely horrific, and that otherwise we've been the better team throughout this game. Uh, but those two little stretches where we've gone four or five minutes without a score has allowed Illinois Chicago to be in this game. I mean, we're at 50% overall, and during those two stretches, we made about 2 out of 20 shots. So 25 for about 30, 34 the rest of the game, meaning we've made most of our shots at every other point this game. But we are starting to pull away a little bit here, 76-67 late in this game. Rebounds plus 2, turnovers minus 1. Both teams about 50% from the field. Both teams similar free throw shooting. Uh, big difference is we are 6 for 20 beyond the arc while they are just 2 of 8. So most of their shots coming inside. And with a similar field goal percentage means we're picking up those extra points uh, beyond the arc. And 11 point lead under a minute to play. We should be cruising to victory here. Uh, we've got nearly 10 points from all of our starters, and actually DeLord made it in the end as everybody got into double figures. Runyon off the bench also adding 13 on 6 of 8 shooting himself. Uh, King, 9 boards, 16 points. Granberry, 8 boards, 14 points. So the two freshmen uh, playing really well today. Ramey, 5 turnovers, not his best day there. But overall... Fairly convincing performance, besides those uh, two little stretches. And that puts us at 7-1 in conference, 16-3 and three on the season. Absolutely our best season by far here in season number four of this career mode. Our next game will be a home game against East Tennessee. And we definitely should be favored to win that one as well. Last time we took a look, which was uh, I think just a game ago, so just a few days ago on calendar at the end of last episode, uh, we were in a three-way tie at the top of the conference, but then you had a bit of a drop-off to fourth from there. And with three teams receiving automatic promotion, we appear at this point, halfway through the conference schedule, to be well on our way towards earning one of those three automatic bids. Uh, but we still have half a schedule to play, and there is plenty of time uh, for that to change. You have new you have new mail. Okay, Chad Nugas coming up. That's one of those three teams on top. 15-4 record. Uh, we are the favorite team though, with Granberry and King uh, again leading us out there. Uh, Watkins the only player at a disadvantage. Clint King. Ooh, look at that, Clint King has been named a quarterfinalist for the Player of the Year Award. Uh, bad news for me is that he's up to 15th. That was not where he was ranked before. He was ranked, uh, but he was right on the back edge. He's now up to 15th there. So 
Uh, Clint King, absolutely dominating right now. Uh, the bad news for me is that very likely puts him into the draft conversation, uh, meaning he very well could be a one and done. Uh, and our recruits for next year aren't that great, uh, which means we would be a step worse. Uh, it would be even worse if we lose uh, if we lose uh, uh, Granberry as well uh, for the same reason. So that that could be very costly coming up. Uh, so keep our eye on that. Uh, at this point, promotion looking likely. It's definitely not certain. Uh, we could have our first deep postseason run. We did get into the NIT two years ago. So, uh, quick recap. Our first season, devastating, horrible record. 6-10 uh, and ten in conference and just barely relegated. 8-1 and one in conference right now, by the way, as we just won. Next up is TCU on the road. That is a tougher game. That is definitely a decent team, and we are on the road. We very well could pick up our second loss in conference. We'll check out that, back, that box score in a little bit. Our second season, we almost rubber-banded. We almost went right back up as we were much better off uh, than the year before with a couple freshmen in the starting lineup after our first recruiting class stabilized the team for the moment for that time uh, just missed out I think we were fourth place uh, and did not win the conference tournament uh, we lost the finals to the team in fifth place so they got the promotion spot instead of us uh, then the third season, last season, uh, players did not develop, did not improve. Uh, they came back essentially the same, and we graduated a whole bunch of guys and were super, super young. Had a good non-conference season, looked like we were on our way, but then had a crazy tough schedule and lost 10 straight to open the conference season. So in comparison, we are 8-1 and one right now. 9-1, we just beat TCU. So, 9-1, last season it was 0-10. Uh, ouch. We did finish by winning 5 out of 6, but it didn't matter. At 5-11, and 11, it was not enough. Uh, in fact, it would have taken 7-9 and nine to keep from getting relegated. So, relegation in 2 out of 3 seasons, but we did have a good season in between, and now in our 4th season, we are absolutely the best we've ever been. 18-3 and three right now. Uh, we can't be terribly far off from uh, the rankings, though our RPI is still just 62, uh, despite the record. You have new mail. <laughs> well, spoke too soon. RPI jumps to 41. And our overall rank for the first time, we are ranked at number 22. So that solid, solid 18-3 record has gotten us uh, into the thick of things. Uh, Charlotte, Chattanooga. Let's see, Charlotte. We are definitely favored. That is a home game. Chattanooga, that's the difficult one. We are favored for that, though. Air Force. Favored for that, but it will be a road game. And the team whose name, I'm not sure if I'm ever saying it correctly, Duquence. Uh, Heavily favored, but also on the road. We've got a lot of matchups that we are the dominant force in. But that does not mean we'll necessarily win those, as we have three out of those next four games on the road. The home one should definitely be a win. 
We are 9-0 at home. It is George Washington and Chattanooga that are a bit of a concern. And Charlotte, by the way, the upcoming game, our fourth place in the league at 6-4. and four. So we're three games clear. If we win that game, we go four games clear of the automatic promotion spot. So we'd have just five games left to play, and we'd be four games clear. Uh, so if we win this next game... It's all but certain, all but a wrap. Meanwhile, Chattanooga, by the way, 8-5 on the road, 8-0 at home, 8-2 uh, in conference. RPI is 15th, and they're not ranked. 16-5 uh, overall, I guess, would be part of the reason why, but they've clearly had some tough losses. Uh Chattanooga's got to be the favorite for that game. Perfect at home. I mean, we are 9-3 on the road, but that would that would definitely boost our ranking. If we win both games this week, uh, we would definitely move up. We'll, we'll watch that game. We will watch that game. Uh, I did not check out that scatter report from last time. Maybe we should go back and see. TCU, 85-70. to 70. Oof. Uh, Halftime deficit, too. And it was Watkins, player of the game with 18 points and 5 assists. Uh, Granberry had 8. Oh, King. King! 11.17 rebounds. 7 turnovers, so. Uh, wow. Wow. Just want to re-emphasize that point one last time. <laughs> Have not seen that in a college game for a long time. Uh, it pops up every once in a while. Super, super dominant performance, but wow. Okay, that being said, let's move on. And on the same day, Thomas of East Tennessee had 15 boards. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. And you've watched 12 of the episodes. 13 will be uh, coming out in a moment. And uh, we're filming 14 right now. Actually, I think 13... No, no. 13 has not been posted yet. 12 was the latest at the time that I'm filming this. I'm a little bit ahead of time on my filming right now. But anyway, thank you. Uh, where were we? That's right, dominating some basketball games. I like this. I like this a lot. It, it's it feels good to have uh, a nice season uh, going right now after <laughs> uh, two relegations in in three years. Where were we? Where were we? We are trying to make our way through here, Charlotte. Should be a win. Should be a relatively straightforward win, even though they are fourth place in the conference. And there it is, 19th win on the season, 10th in the conference, and 87-63. to Whew. We led the whole way. Led by 27, finished with a 24-point victory. Yeah, look at that plus minus in that starting five. Gradbury had 20. King just nine points, quite day, but he still had 14 boards. And three blocks. Watkins, 15, so his scoring has really turned up the last couple games. Ramey had 13. Uh, Harrington, 15 off the bench. Okay, next up is that big game. It's Chattanooga. We're at home. I thought we were on the road. Apparently not. Well, that ups the chances a lot. They are 16 and 6. So, that's a few games worse than us, but that is very much up there. Very much in the thick of things. It's 
the chance to get our 20th win. It is also a chance to guarantee promotion now. So we will definitely watch this game and see how it goes. This will be the last regular season game that we uh, tune into because we will definitely have some postseason action. Uh, we are already guaranteed a spot in the conference tournament. And with 19 wins, uh, we should be thereabouts in the conversation for some sort of postseason play. Maybe not the NCAA guaranteed yet, but we should be in, in the thick of things for at least, you know, like an NIT bid. Even if we lose out the rest of the season. Alright, so we get the game underway. This is a home game for us. Early advantage is 5-2. to two. First deficit, a lot of free throws coming for Chattanooga early in this game. They're 5 of 8 from the free throw line, uh, so m most of their points have come from there. They make their first three-point attempt of the game to uh, reach 10 first. It's gone a little cold here, and we're down 14-9. There we go, a couple back-to-backs, and we're back within one. Ooh, big three-pointer there. Chattanooga doing well beyond the arc. Uh, Watkins, the early scorer for us, has six already. Harrington off the bench already has four himself. Uh, and actually has put up four attempts already, even though he's barely played. Early deficit here, largely down to rebounding. We're a minus six at this point in the game. We've had five steals, though. Uh, we are plus two on the turnovers, but we're just six of 22 from the field. So we are out shooting them almost two to one. Uh, but they're living at the free throw line. And we are shooting very, very poorly at this point. Turn by 11. Let's go ahead and use a timeout here. We actually had a little bit of momentum, and apparently I took it away with that timeout. Not good timing by me. That was more of a, I know I'm going to lose one time out at the half, so I wanted to use it. And at the half, we trail by nine, so we've got some definite work to do. Uh, is it just me, or has King not been playing? Oh, he hasn't, because he's got three fouls, and Delort. So... The foul situation and the insane amount of free throw attempts that Chattanooga had in the first half largely came, and the lead came because they got King and Delord to sit down with three fouls apiece. So if we could stay out of foul trouble in the second half and get these guys into the game, get away from Jefferson and Runyon... Uh, we could probably come back out and dominate this thing, but we trail by 12 right now. More free throw attempts for Chattanooga already early in the second half. Leads down to 10, 55-45, rebound still a minus 8, turnover is still a plus 2. Field goal percentage very much favoring them. Free throw attempts and percentage still very much favoring them. Uh, they're 6 of 8 beyond the arc, so Chattanooga is just shooting the ball well and really getting, getting lucky uh, on the way that the game is being called. The encouraging thing, though, is if we can get these guys back out there. Delord finally back out on the court. King came into the game and instantly was called for a foul, his fourth. So King will, by the end of this game, have only played probably five minutes. 
No wonder we're trailing. Only by six, though. Now by four. Rebound deficit down to four. Their field goal percentage back under 500. They have not had as many uh, free throws here recently, but the fouls are still very much swayed just for this half. It's seven to four. And time is of the essence now. As we trail by one, less than a minute to play. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. 30 seconds. We've got the rebound here. Time out. 21 seconds. Oh, he threw it away. He threw it away. King's in there, by the way, <laughs> for this final minute. He's had five rebounds. We got a rebound here. It was Watkins on that board, and the three-pointer is good to win the game! <laughs> oh, what a comeback. Are you kidding me? They didn't have any more free throw attempts down the stretch. That was the difference. We didn't get called for fouls down the stretch. So either, right, we, we can't actually see what's on the court. Either the referees finally swallowed their whistle and stopped blowing it every two seconds, giving us a chance to get back in the game, or... We got our act together, stopped fouling them every two seconds, got our act together, and in the end, the rebound deficit dropped to four, the turnovers, plus one, so that wasn't the change, right? That, that rebound deficit, we really picked that up quite a while ago. In fact, I think we were down to, what, minus three? Minus two? So, it wasn't that. But the free throws, that's where it changed. They stopped going to the line constantly. Also, they were, what, 6 of 8 beyond the arc? They finished 8 of 13, so they only made 2 for the last 7 in the second half. Meanwhile, we were 11 of 22 beyond the arc. 11 out of the 26 field goals we made were 3-pointers, including a buzzer beater by Edward Rainey. Seven turnovers on the day, but he had eight assists and ten points. The final three of those, the biggest of his career, to win 75-73 at home against Chattanooga. And that should be enough. We're going to see here in a second. Uh, but that should guarantee promotion. Is the rubber banding complete? A four-game gap with four to play. Okay, it's not guaranteed yet. We lose all four. Charlotte wins all four. Chattanooga wins three of four. It, it, there's still mathematically a chance, uh, but we're just about there. One win or one Charlotte loss, and it's guaranteed. That last second shot kept us perfect at home and could for the season. And with that super high RPI, that's going to boost our RPI quite a bit. Tough game coming up, though. 6-6 six and six in conference, and we're going to be on the road. They're 8-2 and two at home. In four seasons, of course, we don't watch every game firsthand. And I know I've had a couple a couple of big wins in those first three seasons and, and this season so far. Uh, but that definitely has a feel of being the biggest win uh, in the four years of our program's history. Not counting back to the 2017 edition and 20 plus seasons that we played there that this technically carries over from but I think we're far enough into this one now wrapping up our fourth season that we can kind of lay the 2017 edition aside now and you know 
kind of leave those references and comparisons in the past. And I, I know that most of you watching this series uh, have not gone back to watch the 2017 yeah. edition. But it's still there, by the way, on YouTube playlist. If you want to go back and check out the original, uh, the start, when we literally began in the lowest division conference v i believe it is yeah and clawed our way up at the high point conference f which is when we started this series uh, we are up to 19th in the nation now by the way into the top 20 as we continue to grab some wins and the rpi does jump uh, quite a bit to 30 now with uh, that big win Okay, so Bowling Green uh, is coming up. Big favorites there. That'll be at home. Clint King is a semi-finalist. Kent State, that's a weaker team on the schedule. Big favorites for that one. Uh, so the Duquesne's game is the, is the biggest coming up. Uh, but Air Force, I think, is on the road as well, yeah. Semi-finalists. Now 14th, Clint King, so he moves up another spot. Okay, uh, we'll check out box score on this one. So I'll go one day at a time here. And that did mark our 20th win of the season. It's always a big landmark. Always seen as a successful year when you're able to get 20. Now 21, and we hit triple digits, 100 to 81. On the road, at a good team. And we almost led the entire way. It looks like they scored first, we leveled the score, then we scored again, and then after that, Never trailed. Only a 10-point halftime lead, uh, but we had another 9 points in the second half. We led by as many as 25 before the end of that game. DeLord was player of the game this time with 18 and 10 for him, uh, adding 2 blocks, 3 steals, 4 assists. That is a hefty stat line right there. Granberry had nine rebounds. King just five today, but he did score 17. Watkins again 18, so uh, this point in the season he has really stepped up his scoring as we've seen, you know, that last four or five games. Uh, he's been a real force to reckon with. Alright. Uh, Air Force next. It's a road game. Uh, but this is one of those ones where you can feel relatively confident about. But that's the moment you lose a game, isn't it? I don't want to jinx myself, but being real realistic. The last one was the tough game. The last one was the one you go in fighting for. Here, we walk in to go up against Air Force and their mental toughness says, hey, we've got a chance to upset a ranked team, the number one team in the conference. We're at home. We've got our crowd backing us. Let's get the job done. It's a chance for them to get their 10th win on the season. So they're going to come in fired up, ready to play. Are we? Or are we going to come in with our foot off the gas and, and relax and think we're going to cruise to victory? I still think we're the better team but I wouldn't be surprised if we lose. We don't, though. We pull it off. Kent State at home. That's the one where, <laughs> where I've got the overconfidence. So 22 and 3 now. Uh, injured player. Strained hamstring for Vernon Delord. 12 days. Uh, not sure if he's going to play. This could hurt us. It's our third best player on the roster. Uh, so these next, well, week and a half, two weeks, could be a, a difficult stretch for us. Could be. It's 
So our second conference loss could be coming up. By the way, that could roll over into the conference tournament. We've got just two games left. We've got a chance to go 15-1 in conference. We've got a chance to go 24-3 and three in the regular season. That is amazing. I am a little nervous with uh, Delord injured as we roll into this week. Uh, it does look like uh, with 10 days to go, two games left in the league, that's going to cover seven days. It looks like he'll just about be back to full health uh, prior to the conference tournament, so that's, that's really good. And honestly, these two games aren't going to matter. Uh, with those last couple of wins, we have mathematically guaranteed promotion uh, for next season. We do get that first win. Now Bowling Green at home, uh, again, like the odds, even without uh, Delord or Delord playing limited minutes, playing hurt. By the way, on the national scene, it's Arizona on top with a 23-2 and record. It is so difficult in this game, set up the way it is. It is so difficult to have a perfect season. Here's why. In the NCAA, and the way that it is set up, you have conferences. And even though you have some conferences with really high prestige, in almost every one of them, in any given season, you only have, by the way, we won, we're 15-1 now, you only have two or three really good teams, elite teams. Teams with crazy high prestige that year after year are going to be up there. I mean, Gonzaga's the only one in their conference. Uh, Kentucky, Duke, you know, there's they're, they're that same small set of teams that are consistently near the top. If we look at the rankings right now, and take the Pac-12, for instance, the, you know, the conference uh, that I was a part of, Arizona, number one in the country. Fantastic. Look down the rankings. California, 18. USC just cracked the rankings at 24. Oregon was in the rankings. But there's clear absences uh, from that, especially at the very top. You could say that of any conference. There is not a single conference out there that has 10 elite programs. The way this is set up as my RPI hits 20, my rank now 15, my final record for the regular season 24 and 3, 15 and 1 in conference and we'll look at the conference standings as I continue. The way this is set up is conference A was the 16 highest prestige schools in the nation. Conference B was the next 16, C was the next 16, and so on, down to the bottom. There's no hiding anymore, and, and we'll, we'll take a look at this in just a second, exactly what I mean, as here are the final standings. We end up three games clear of George Washington and Chattanooga. We end up six games clear of Charlotte and TCU. These three schools, George Washington, Chattanooga, and us, are automatically promoted already, guaranteed, regardless of what we do from this day forward. I ended up a perfect 13-0 at home, 11-3 on the road, and that RPI still has not passed Chattanooga, by the way, uh, but we are up to 20th in the nation, which is awesome. 
Absolutely awesome. Uh, looking at the team schedule briefly, I'll go back to that. Uh, we lost our first game of the season at Tulane. We lost at Abilene Christian, and we lost our one home game to George Washington on the road. And it was a big loss. I mean, all three of those losses were, were not close. Abilene Christian, the only one within 10 points. Uh, but we've won every other game, including 100 points. That was amazing. Uh, but here's what I'm talking about. Here's Conference A. Now, promotion, relegation, three seasons worth, right? Changes things a little bit here. But here's the 16 best teams in the country, all playing in the same conference, and playing 16 games against each other. Meaning they're literally just beating the snot out of each other. What I compare that to is the Premier League in soccer, a.k.a. football. The English top-tier soccer league is like this. A lot of people could argue La Liga might be better because you have the likes of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, who are phenomenal teams. Juventus is a phenomenal team. Uh, Bayern Munich, phenomenal team. Okay, And it's been a while since a Premier League team has won the European Champions League. The reason for it? Top to bottom. Emphasis on the bottom here. Best league in the world. By far. Hands down. You can take the bottom teams in the Premier League and throw them in a league with the bottom teams of the Bundesliga and uh, League One and La Liga and you know all the top leagues around the world, really. Uh, put them all in a conference t together. Take, take like the bottom five teams in all of them. And who's going to be your top three or four at the end of the season? It's going to be teams from the Premier League. Guaranteed. Because they are that much better. It's that much more competitive. The league championship, the second division in England, and they have this promotion relegation like we do, by the way, is far, far, far superior to any other nation's second division. I mean, there's a decent chance that you're an American watching this, being that it's college basketball based with American teams very well could not be. I mean, you could be from another nation, but a lot of you are definitely American. Now, the MLS, right, since we're on that topic for a second of, of soccer, of football, the MLS has come a long, long ways, and it's a lot better than it used to be. However, if you brought the championship teams and had them playing against the MLS no contest no contest it's not not even close the MLS teams just aren't there yet I, key keyword emphasis on yet because it continues to grow and evolve and become more and more competitive each year but the fact that Wayne Rooney who for a long time was my favorite player was in the conversation for best player in the world, but generally was around third or fourth best for a number of years. Slowly faded as he got older. A lot of wear and tear. Playing in that toughest division in the world that we were just talking about. The fact that at this point where he was just, just barely good enough to play in the Premier League anymore, didn't have the pace anymore, uh, couldn't handle the physical nature of the game the way it was anymore. Uh, I was definitely out of position. The fact that he comes over to DC United, who were utter garbage, and overnight turned them into almost the best team in, in MLS. Uh, and some of those highlights, oh my goodness, uh, it's exciting to see him playing like that again. I, I've only seen highlights. I haven't really watched DC United play or too much MLS myself. Uh, but wow. 
Back to the college basketball. Here's that Conference A. Number one team in the country. Number three. Number five. Number seven. Number eight. Number four. 20. 14. 9. And then you got Louisville Cardinals. 8-8 eight eight in the conference. Right? You've got Clemson. U of O. Notre Dame. UConn. Texas A&M. And at Seton Hall. Right? Seton Hall. Seton Hall. 0-16. Not a single win in Conference A. But look at their overall record. 10 and 19. They were 10 and 3 non conference. They were 10 and 10 at home. They won 10 games at home. They were 500 at home. That does not look like a bad team. They were 0 and 9 on the road, by the way. Eight of those coming in conference. So they only had one road game in their non-conference schedule. Though, so that's saying something. But their RPI is still 195. There's only one other team outside of the top 100, Clemson. So these guys literally just beat the snot out of each other. And I like that about the setup here. I know not everybody's a big fan of the promotion relegation system. I adore it. I, I love it. Uh, but let's continue on. You came to watch some basketball. Let's play some basketball. Uh, conference tournament does not mean a thing anymore. I've got my promotion. The only thing it means is a conference championship. Uh, so I will zip through that so we can get to uh, a postseason. Or should I? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, big. Big question now. Because we're almost out of time for this episode. Uh, sorry, some of that's my bad with the uh, that story there. But we've got a real chance. Uh, also, I think the Clint King storyline is, is definitely one to stick with and follow and see what happens. Uh, so, what we're going to do, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're going to do, uh, let's take a look at some statistics, I know some of you are big into statistics, and I was, and in a way still am, uh, certainly, you know, take a look at it regularly, always curious about that, uh, 25th scoring in the in the nation, 17th in steals, 8th defensively in turnovers, so we're protecting the ball. But let's uh, let's take a look here. I only have five guys that actually played every game. That's crazy. Delord did miss one with that uh, hamstring injury that he had. Ramey missed a couple. Harrington's missed a few. And then these back end of the bench. Runyon had those four starts uh, when Watkins missed a little while, and it was kind of swapped between uh, Raby and Watkins on who got those starts. And actually, no, it wasn't when Watkins missed. It was when Raby missed. King, leader in minutes per game, almost 30, meaning he's out there 75% of the time. Definitely leading the field goals made category and attempted, uh, but deservedly so. He's shooting 52% from the field, the Lord even better, uh, but it tends to be a little bit easier when you have a stud next to you uh, who's going to pull away a defender now and then and, and give you an open look. Ramey, most makes per game, but not a great percentage. King, <laughs> King, Clint King, Bauer forward, a stretch four, apparently. 35% from the field, not not the greatest three-point percentage, uh, but for a four, for a big man, that that's pretty good. Uh, Delord, wow, even better. Almost making one per game. Harrington, the next guy, kind of getting regular looks at uh, 40%. Granberry, 38, so he did well there. 
Not a lot of shots per game, just 41% from the field, but definitely good beyond the arc. Free throw line. Ramey's our guy. Wow, look at that. 91%. That's, that's uh, NBA type numbers on that. Runyon, pretty good there. Oh my goodness. 3.8 offensive rebounds a game. <laughs> He has made such a difference to this team. And Granberry, I mean, he's second in rebounds with seven. So I really, really hit a home run with those two recruits. Ramey's four turnovers a game is not too good, especially with the, the ratio. King does get in a little bit of foul trouble. He is aggressive. Uh, and Delord, they're, they're kind of both up there, and that really hurt us in that Chattanooga game. Finally, points. King on top. Ramey, Watkins, level behind, about five points back. Delord, just a half a point below that. And Granberry nearly reaches 10 points per game by the end of the season. Remember, he started the season at about 7 a game, so he's really picked that up. Runyon off the bench. Uh, and Harrington off the bench, both scoring well. There's so much more depth to this team. Uh, really excited about the future. Now, let's see here. We want to look at... There we go. So, player records. Oh, no, no. I want team records. No, I don't want the whole association. I want my team's records. Where are you? School records. First look at this. At the end of our fourth regular season, anyway. And this will be a quick look, because I am now out of time for the episode. So, Runyon and King have both had 11 field goals in a single game. Runyon did that as a freshman it is sad that he literally has not developed at all in the last two years and is still the same player he was. Otherwise, he very well could be as good as King is now uh, by this point, a couple of years on. You know what? What I care about more, though, is some career stats early on. Carr, the first guy who's no longer with the program that's up there in field goals made. Uh, it's actually Ramey leading the way one field goal above Runyon. Also leading in free throws made. And three-pointers made. So I guess we could probably assume who's on top of the scoring charts. Only two guys have had enough attempts to even count on field goal percentage. And they're both guys that are gone now from that first season. Okay, here we go. Points. Ramey, well clear on top for career numbers. Runyon in second, but now on the bench, so it's going to be harder for him to score this year. Potentially next. We'll see. He could be a starter next year as Delord is the one senior in the lineup anyway. Uh, Carr, hanging on to three. Watkins is up to four. Harrington, five. And... Ooh, okay. So Clint King is not on this list, which means this does not update until the end of the season. So this was after last year. Had to be. It used to update right away, but I don't see Clint King up here. He should have something, right? Am I missing him? There's Nick King. Yeah. No 
sign. No sign of it. Okay, interesting. So it, it doesn't update until the end of the year anymore. You used to get live updates on that. Double doubles. So entering this year, the Lord had six as the leader. So it'll be interesting to see how that updates. Well, we'll go ahead and leave off there. Uh, we're heading into the conference tournament and whatever postseason tournament we get into, which very well with a 24-3 and record, ranked 15th in the nation, very well could be, should be an NCAA tournament bid. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.